though the calendar still says February, we're certainly getting a March Madness kind of vibe this week thanks to a trio of fantastic finishes that all went down in the span of 24 hours. Tied at 74 yesterday with NSIC leading Moorhead in the final second, Sioux Falls and a good hope splashes a game-winning three to lead Sioux Falls women to a 77-74 win. Now the irony of this is that the Washington alum had spent the previous two years in the Fargo-Moorhead area playing at North Dakota State, which probably made the shot in her 17 points even sweeter in her first time back. Meanwhile, back in South Dakota, the top-ranked T-Titans trailed by one at Lenox when Justin Hone on the inbound will throw a cross-court pass to Noah Friedel, who catches and makes the go-ahead layup with one second left. Friedel finishes with 40 points, and the Titans win 68-67. But the wildest winner came 24 hours earlier up north in Groton, and for that, I'm going to let Groton Daily Independence Paul Cosell tell you how it went down. Cohen's so got the ball, six seconds to go. Doden, up court, two seconds. He who with the lead? It's in! It's in! It's in! Groton De Hoon missed the long one. Oh my gosh, he's out the door. The team is going crazy. Oh my gosh. Can't decide who's more excited, the announcer or the little girls in that. Now, that was Groton's Broden DeHoot, by the way, with the half-court shot that gave the Tigers their 55-52 win over Warner. We have plenty of good material for our Billion Automotive Plays of the Week on Wednesday. And our thanks to Cosell, Coach Justin Hansen, and Holly Dowd for sending those video clips. Well, a place at the March Madness table isn't assured for the USD men. Eight of the Summit League's nine teams qualify for the tournament, with one being left out, and the Coyotes are fighting it out with four other teams to secure their spot. Today they host one of those teams in Oral Roberts, and it's kind of a three-point shooting contest in the first half. Stanley Amude, Trey, BN, and one, the rare four-point play for the Coyotes' sophomore. Oral Roberts just as good from long range, too, though. Carlos Jurgens, nothing but net for three of his five points. Back the other way come the Coyotes. Cody Kelly was really impressive in their overtime loss to Omaha and Sioux Falls on Thursday. He knocks it down to give USD a one-point lead. And then the Yotes work it inside to Trey Birch Manning, who's starting to get a little healthy after some early season injuries. Coyotes build their lead up to three. Now we saw Mude hit from deep. This time he gets a nice pass from Tyler Peterson. A little higher percentage shot on the throwdown. He had 18 on the day. However, ORU closes the first half strong. Kevin Obanor with a slam of his own. He had 24. And the Golden Eagles get the win 86-72. No shock. Say the Coyotes about what beat them in this one. We just didn't guard, and you know, you, you're at home and you give up 56 percent from the from the field. That's just that's not acceptable. We gave up too many layups. We we didn't guard the ball, and and that's on the guards on our team. Um, we gotta we gotta just nut up and, and and play some defense. Well then, 24 hours earlier, the USD women had a little more trouble than expected with Oral Roberts, trailing virtually the entire game until a 27 to 10 fourth quarter that put them over the top to win 75-64. Kira Duffy's 18 led the way to help the Coyotes improve to 22 and 3, meaning there's a good chance that USD is going to be in the Associated Press Top 25 tomorrow for the first time in the Division I era after narrowly missing out last week. More importantly, it's a primer for the kind of games they're going to likely have to face in the tournament come March. And it's a good, like, you know, I don't know, teaching us to just rely on each other and trust each other. Um, it really bonds your team together. You know, when everything's going right, it's easy to be best friends, but it's when things start really getting rough and, you know, shots aren't falling, we're turning the ball over, um, that we really need to stick together. And I think that these kind of games help us do that. Meanwhile, up in Brookings, the Jackrabbit basketball teams put a doubleheader beat down on the University of North Dakota. In the women's game, SDSU started on a 13-0 run and never really looked back, winning 81-58 keeping pace with USD atop the Summit League. The men's game was a bit of a struggle despite being an 80 to 55 victory and getting 29 points and 20 rebounds from Mike Dom. That's because the Rabbits struggled in the first half going 0 of 15 from three point range and only leading by one. Even though they pulled away, let's just say that head coach TJ Otzelberger uh, was not pleased. Oh, we did. Um, Coach wrote something on the board about it that I won't repeat. Uh, he was not happy with it, but uh, you know, I thought, our shot selection just kind of wasn't where it normally was in that first half. We really weren't aggressive driving downhill and then getting those kick out open threes like we normally get. I think we were just settling. Yeah, I mean, I think that's in the back of our minds, but um, all in all, we just look at the next game as a next opportunity to stay focused on that game and make sure we win that game. And so, um, yeah, I think it's a 
competitive atmosphere between the two of us, both being in South Dakota, but um, we're just trying to focus on each game ahead of us. Well, we started with buzzer beaters, and we have another one tonight in college hoops. Iowa shaved a 15-point deficit with Northwestern at 4-13, down to two. And then with one second left, Jordan Bohannon does that. A game-winning three. Again, they were down by 15 with 4-13 to go, and they win. 80-79, to huge win for the Hawks over at Carver Hawkeye Arena. Contrary to all the evidence around us, I can promise you that spring is coming and I have real proof. College softball is being played. Granted, it's indoors at the Uni Dome and that weird turf that looks like coffee got spilled on it, but hey, spring is getting closer, I promise. The Jackrabbits wrapping up a weekend tourney against host Northern Iowa top two. Jack's down three nothing until Lindsey Chris hits it strong along and plenty on two run home run. SDSU gets within one at three two. Panthers also played some long ball, and they did it a little more often than State. Ashley Chesser going deep in the third for a two-run shot. She drove in three on the day. Jacks fall 3-2, but still had a pretty good week as they come home 3-2 and two in their opening tournament. Clark's Kim Kaufman was in position to win her first LPGA Tour down under in Australia at the Honda Vic Open. And she couldn't have started off any better last night in the final round. On her first hole, Kaufman rolls home a long birdie putt. And at this point, when this drops, she has a four-shot lead with 17 holes to go. Unfortunately, that's when things began to unravel. After bogeys on three and four, Kaufman appears to hit a good second shot on the par five fifth hole. But the ball doesn't stop or sit, and it goes behind a bush. Moments later, she's in some trouble. She needs to salvage this putt just to get a bogey and stay tied for the lead. It does not go, and Kaufman never really recovers, shooting a six over par 78. Her playing partner, Celine Boutier, took advantage here with the birdie on 15 to put this away. Now, she won the Symmetra Tour's Great Life Challenge in Sioux Falls two years ago, and she wins her first LPGA tournament event this year as Kaufman finishes tied for eighth. Also, the Minnesota Wild lose at the New York Islanders 2-1. We're back in one moment.